Hi guys, so today's video is just a short video about how to configure your boot device on an LSI HBA card. So here is the R710 and you can see I have 12 uh, Hitachi drives and a Kingston SSD. And the Kingston SSD is actually the one that has my operating system while the Hitachi hard drives you just saw were uh, just data drives for a ZFS pool. And so, you know, the desired configuration would be for this system to boot off of that SSD, but as you'll see in a moment here, it's not going to find a boot device. And I'm going to show you how to fix this, how to select the proper boot device in the LSI ROM um, program, and then to make sure that your operings or the BIOS of the the server itself is set up correctly as well. So we'll just give this a few moments to kind of go through the process of uh, posting and you'll see that it's not going to find a boot device. Okay so as you can see it says no boot device available even though that uh, Kingston SSD that you saw earlier does have an operating system installed but it just simply is not set up correctly. So, and if I go to the boot manager at this point, I'll hit F11, and you'll see that I have the normal boot, I've got the integrated NIC, and I've also got the hard drive. And you'll see under hard drive, it lists the integrated RAID, which in, the, in this case is not really a RAID card, it's the uh, H310 Mini with LSI IT mode firmware on an R720 XD server. And you'll notice that it's pointing to LUN0 which is a Hitachi of the HGST is one of the Hitachi drives. So for whatever reason, this uh, system is now currently set up to try to boot off of one of those Hitachi drives. But like I said earlier, those are just simply data drives. There's no operating system installed on them. Uh, this is this happens just to be uh, the first of the Hitachi drives, which is the LUN0. And so if you want to boot off of any other device, that's connected to that HBA, obviously this is this configuration is not going to work. So this is what we'll do. We will enter system setup and let me just kind of show you what it looks like inside the BIOS. Alright, so here we are in the BIOS of the R720XD. Let's go into the BIOS settings menu and under boot settings I currently have it set up to just legacy BIOS booting, so I'll click on BIOS setup, and you will see that I have a uh, hard drive as one of the boot options, and the hard drive disk sequence here shows the integrated RAID, which is in this case just the H310 with a uh, mini monolithic module with LSI IT mode firmware, and it's pointing to one of the Hitachi drives. And if I click on hard drive sequence, that's really the only option I have. So what's going on here is that if you don't specifically choose a boot device uh, that is connected to your HBA, your LSI HBA, and by the way, what I'm going to show you uh, later in terms of selecting the actual boot device in the LSI card is universal. It doesn't matter if you're on the Dell server or some other server, so long as you have the BIOS ROM program uh, flashed into your LSI H HBA, the process is very, very similar. But in this case, what's happening is that I have not specifically selected a boot drive amongst all the drives that are connected. So I have 13 devices connected. I have 12 uh, spinning hard drives and one SSD, and I haven't selected a particular boot device. And so what's happening is that it is by default picking the very first device, and that just happens to be the Hitachi drive. And so, you know, again, that doesn't have my operating system, so that's not going to work out. All right, so let's get out of here, and let me show you how to actually set it up correctly. We'll finish and we'll exit. All right, so the system is just going to reboot again, and I'm going to get into the LSI ROM program. So we'll let it go through its posting process. And then when you see the LSI ROM kind of announce itself as Avago Technologies, it will prompt you to hit Control C to enter the uh, Avago SAS utility, a configuration utility, and that's what we're going to do.
All right, so here's the Avago Technologies, and it's going to prompt me momentarily to say, you know, hit Control C to enter the SAS configuration utility. So I'm going to wait for that prompt. Here it is, and now I'll hit the uh, Control C sequence, and we'll let this continue doing its thing, and then eventually it will start up the SAS configuration utility. All right, so here we are in the SAS configuration utility and you will see listed one of the LSI controllers. So this uh, ident identifies itself as the SAS 9211-8i and that's because it's running that particular firmware. But this is basically the uh, <coughs> Dell H310 flashed with LSI IT mode firmware. So let's go ahead and select that controller to get in uh, the specific settings for that controller. So I'm just I'm going to basically hit enter. Okay, so the first thing that's really important to note if you're trying to boot off of your LSI IT mode controller is this uh, section here where it says boot support. So you want to make sure that this is enabled for both BIOS and OS. And if it's not, then you have to change this and you change it by hitting the either plus or minus key to change to toggle through the various settings. So here it would be disabled, but of course I just said we need this to be enabled in order for uh, us to be able to boot off of uh, one of the drives connected to this IT mode HPA. So that's the first step. Make sure that that is enabled if you want to boot off of this card or a device connected to this card. Now the second part is to select the actual preferred boot device. So we go into SAS topology in order to see all the other drives. And in this case, this has an expander. The R720 XD has a, a SAS expander backplane. So it's going to identify the top level that we are attached to an enclosure. And so we have to select that, hit enter, and then we will get into the devices connected within that enclosure. And so as you can see, devices 0 through 11 are my Hitachi hard drives and it basically it was trying to boot off of the first device there and of course as i mentioned that is not my os drive my os drive is actually this kingston ssd that's showing up in bay 12 and it's basically the last device so how do you select one of these devices and yeah sorry this this uh, screen refreshes every now and then to capture uh, capture any changes to the backplane so you basically highlight the device that you want as your boot device and at this point uh, when you have that highlighted you hit alt b for boot and when you do that you'll see that next to uh, the device info column here it will uh, show this as a boot device now in addition to that let's say you have two uh, ssds or two hard drives or whatever it is that you want to boot off of you have two devices you want to boot off of because maybe they're mirrored and if one device completely fails and gets pulled out, you still want to be able to boot off of the other device. So you want the alternate boot device. Now, I'm not going to really set this because I only have one SSD, but I will show you how to do that as well. So let's say I wanted to also boot off of bay 7 here. So if I have, if I have that highlighted, what I want to do is uh, press the key sequence Alt-A. So let me wait for that refresh and finish. And now you will see under the device info that they've added uh, this uh, tag here uh, for alternative boot device. Okay, that's what alt, that alt is for. And so that means that the preferred boot device is going to be the one that has the boot tag. And in this case, it would be my uh, Kingston SSD. And if that fails, then the alternative would be this Hitachi hard drive. Now, of course, in my case, that is not going to be the desired configuration. So in order to remove that tag, I simply hit the key sequence again. I do Alt uh, uh, Alt A. Okay, so Alt A for alternative, Alt B for the actual boot device. So in this case now, I've configured the system, uh, the the LSI um, BIOS ROM here program to identify that Kingston SSD as the preferred boot device. And so now I can uh, go ahead and exit out of this by hitting Escape. And then of course I want to save these changes. So I will save those changes and exit this menu. And now I'm back to this screen, so I'll hit exit again, and I'll say save changes, then exit this menu again. 
and now I'm at the top level menu where I can select different controllers I will hit escape here and we will uh, exit the configuration utility and reboot and so this time around we should have the correct boot device selected so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this post again and uh, I will press F2 to get into the system BIOS again and I will show you that uh, in the system BIOS as the available uh, hard drives that, uh, that are bootable will now have changed and you will see that Kingston SSD listed as a option. Alright, I just hit F2 and I'm going to get in the system setup. Now one thing to note when you look at this is that now the Kingston SSD is listed at the very top of all the drives that are connected. And so basically whatever is going to be chosen as the boot device gets it at the top of the list. And if you don't spe uh, specify a, a specific device as your boot device, it basically chooses whatever is at the top of the list. And now that I've uh, specifically chosen the Kingston SSD as my preferred boot device, that Kingston SSD is now listed at the very top. Okay, so we're in the system uh, BIOS here. Let's click on that. Let's go to boot settings, uh, BIOS boot settings, and under hard drive, you will see here, actually, I don't even have to click on this, but you'll, it says integrated RAID, and now it's uh, pointing to the Kingston SSD as the boot device. All right, so this means that if I go ahead and just let this thing boot, it should now boot the Kingston SSD. Save changes, sure, I don't think I actually made any changes, but let's go ahead and do that, and we'll do finish, and let's reboot. So this time I'm going to let the system completely post and automatically uh, boot the preferred boot device and that should be that Kingston SSD which has an installation of CentOS Linux on it. Alright guys, so there it is. It's automatically now selecting the Kingston SSD and booting my CentOS uh, 7 installation on that Kingston SSD automatically. Alright, so there you have it guys. That's how you select the boot devices on your LSI uh, IT mode HBA cards. So hopefully, uh, I know that was a little bit cryptic because when you're in that SAS topology menu, it really doesn't show you uh, that you have to uh, hit the key sequence Alt B or Alt A and you know, you're, I guess you're just kind of assumed to know that. So it is a little bit cryptic. I know it's not very obvious and so I know some people have had some difficulty trying to figure that out and that's why I'm making this video. So hopefully that helps you guys out in figuring out how to select your boot device on an LSI IT mode card. And again, I was doing this on an R720, but that uh, SAS configuration utility that's in the BIOS ROM uh, of this, uh, the LSI card is the same uh, on, any, on any system. So that part will basically be identical on wh whatever kind of server you're on. The only difference will be in how you select the boot device within the BIOS of the, the system that you're on. In this case, I was in the, the BIOS setup screen for the R720 XD and in your, if you're not using the same server, it'll probably look a little bit different in whatever server you're in. But as far as selecting the boot device and the al alternative boot device on the LSI card itself, that part uh, is identical, you know, regardless. So anyway, I uh, hope you guys uh, found that helpful. And if you liked it, please give me a like on this video. And uh, as always, uh, remember to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet so you can see more videos from me. All right, thank you very much. Bye-bye.